Opera Fatale had absolutely no right to be this scary. Imagine this, your sister just got the game as a gift from family friends. You are both really excited to play it, it's supposed to be an educational game about music theory and history. Educational sounds kinda meh, but I do some learning if I can do some gaming. <laughs> What we didn't know was that for some reason the developers decided to traumatize us and other kids with this game. Of course I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but really the whole atmosphere, sound design and music is quite scary, especially if you are a kid. That sound when you pick up those notes with the questions on it permanently got stored in my amygdala or something. Every time I hear it, it still kinda spooks me. So what is this game anyways? Opera Fatale is an educational point and click game that was developed by Heureka Klett, a German software development company specializing in edutainment, who also worked on other gems such as Physicus, Chemicus and Bioscopia. In Opera Fatale you are playing as the conductor Angelo, whose musical score allegedly has been stolen by a mysterious thief. Angelo must now solve a series of music themed riddles that have been scattered throughout the whole opera house in order to actually save the performance. But much more importantly, look at that damn chin, my man's been mewing. The game starts off with Angelo frantically running towards the opera house, like even this cutscene scared me as a kid. Sure I was a sensitive child, but still the vibe this game gives off is so weird at times that I think it's so funny that people thought this was like a good kids game. Upon entering the opera you are immediately greeted with the first mysterious note and that spooky stinger. I remember when my sister and I played it for the first time, we went down to the basement area after this and got greeted with an even more terrifying scene. Where's the physical scar? Where is anything? Where? Where? Obviously not all areas are like this, but while venturing through the various parts of the opera building, there's always that mysterious and threatening vibe present. And as a kid, my imagination started to get the better of me and I would be so scared to enter a new area in fear of actually seeing something there. <laughs> The exploring part of the game is classic point and click gameplay, but can get really frustrating, especially when you are trying to turn around or leave a room due to the at times abysmal controls that sometimes only let you turn in one direction, don't allow for sequential clicks or just freeze until you click the right thing in the image. But most of this is of course due to the age of Opera Fatale. As I mentioned earlier, to actually progress in the game, you have to solve musical riddles. These riddles are written on notes that are hidden throughout the opera. Not only do you have to find out the answer, which is hard in itself, sure, if you have a basic understanding of music theory, a lot of them are quite easy, but others are so random, like how am I supposed to know what the brother-in-law of Mozart's high school girlfriend is called or something. If you don't know much about music theory, you could of course Google nowadays, but there's also the in-game music theory and music history learning tools. These are actually done quite well, especially for the time it came out. Finding the notes though can sometimes be even harder than the question itself. The game hides things in spots that are really easy to miss. On multiple occasions I had to backtrack and double check everything to find the missing notes. Once you do actually find the note, you have to remember or write down the question because as far as I know there is no way of checking them again apart from actually going back to where you like literally found the note and click on it again. Nowadays I'd say this is just immersive detective game design but it can be quite annoying at times. When you then actually do successfully answer a set of questions, a new area is revealed. The level design is 
really well done and quite varied. You can explore everything from the main entrance hall to the basement full of props to a cafe with musically named Cake or the main opera and the adjacent backstage areas. There's a lot of detail hidden throughout and everything feels very authentic, which gets me right back to my theater days. I also really like how each new area is always connected to the previous in multiple ways, so progressing and the occasional regressing feels quite organic. Then there is the aforementioned ever-growing tension. You of course want to find out who is doing all this. Like seriously, there are moments in this game where you see shadows behind the corner and then hear someone running away, or where you just went past the piano and a few minutes later you hear someone playing that piano. Like, this is some shit straight out of amnesia. All of this ends in pretty much the only way they could have ended it without getting like a 16 or 18 rating and somehow tying the quite absurd story together. In the end, everything turns out to be just a dream. But damn, I'm happy I never actually played through the whole game as a kid because that end scene right before you wake up is absolutely horrifying. So, hey, if you want to learn about music theory, Mozart Sex Life and get scared while doing it, this might be the perfect game for you and your kids. Thank you for watching this video. If you like spooky games, check out my video on the game In Sound Mind. And if you want to support my channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. And of course, as always, if you enjoy sounds in your ear holes, check out the ones I put out on other major platforms. This was a very complicated way of asking you to check out my music. Bye.